So the final episode of Life is Strange is out, and that means it's time to take a look back and discuss my thoughts on the game as a whole, and kind of go into each of the episodes and discuss how the game stood up as one continuous product. Now, before we get into the full review, I am trying to keep this as spoiler-free as possible, but the gameplay that you will be seeing behind me is going to come from different episodes, so I can't promise that there won't be some minor spoilers throughout. I'm going to do my best to keep it devoid of any major spoilers. There will be no big plot spoilers in the gameplay behind me, but there might be minor smaller moments in this game that if you haven't played the entire game, they'll be revealed to you here. No, again, nothing major, just a warning. Now, onto the review itself, what do I think of Life is Strange? It's probably my favorite game of 2015 so far. Now, obviously that might change. There are a lot of great looking games out there on the horizon right now, but I really love Life is Strange, and the biggest thing about it for me personally are the characters. The characters in this game are some of the most well-written and relatable and believable characters I've ever seen in a game. And really, for me, that's what helps to carry this whole game more so than anything else are the characters of Max and Chloe and Kate and Warren and Nathan and everybody in this game. You just find yourself getting very attached to these characters because they're written very well. Most of the characters are introduced seemingly fairly cliché. The protagonist, Max, is the shy, awkward, teenage, artsy girl. Cliché. Chloe's the, the angsty, teenage rebel who's got to do everything that her parents hate. There's Nathan, the spoiled, mean, rich kid that owns the school and gets away with everything. Everyone seems very cliché at first, but as the episodes go on and on, they take those clichés and basically tear them down and show different sides of these characters, which I think really helps get you invested because the characters are almost always subverting your expectations of what you thought they were going to be. Of course, the characters are helped by really good writing. Awkward teenage slang aside, a little bit, for one character, not gonna name names, Chloe, but Overall, the writing for the characters is really, really good. It all really helps pull you in and get you invested in the characters, who in turn get you invested in the overarching plot. Which is good on its own, mind you. It's actually a very interesting plot. It kind of combines a high school drama with a surprisingly dark kidnapping mystery and weird mystical time travel elements. The whole thing is very interesting. But the characters, for me, are what drove it all. And then, of course, there is the big twist later on in Episode 4, which I'm not going to reveal here. Again, I'm not going to comment in case you haven't played it, but it's a highlight moment of the game for sure, because on the one hand, it floors you, or at least it floored me, because I didn't see the big twist coming. But at the same time, looking back, you can see that the twist is cleverly foreshadowed throughout a lot of the game, which ties back into the writing. The game is written well enough that the twist is not obvious to you, but it is hinted at throughout if you pay attention. So yeah, the writing and the plot and the characters are fantastic, but there are other elements to this game that make it really stand out. Just kind of the atmosphere. It has a very unique, artsy sort of vibe about it that helps it stand out and feel fresh compared to the rest of the games out there right now. The soundtrack is very acoustic, very stripped down, very indie sounding, which fits the tone of the game perfectly. And the visuals in general have an almost hand-painted quality to the textures that makes things almost look like a piece of art come to life which, again, ties very well back into the whole theme and vibe of the game. And some people have complained about the game being too hipster, 
but frankly, I really liked that. I thought it helped make the game stand out. It felt different. It felt unique. It looked, it sounded, and felt different compared to the other games out there. I like that about it. Maybe I'm too hipster for those people too, but I, I thought it created a really good atmosphere and lended itself very well to the story and the characters. So, now that I have appropriately gushed about how much I loved Life is Strange, is there anything about it that didn't work? Or, at least, that I didn't think was as good as the rest of the game? And yeah, there was. Uh, the first thing that comes to mind, obviously, would be the big, divisive ending, which basically split people down the middle whether they loved it or couldn't stand it. Personally, I sit somewhere in the middle, depending on what exactly we're talking about. I thought it was good, and other parts, I didn't like it. But that's a separate video, because I can't really discuss the ending without spoiling everything. So, watch that if you want to know what I think of the ending of the game. The only other major thing in Life is Strange that stands out as a moment that I didn't really care for was a moment early in episode four, the first major choice you make in that episode. The build-up to it was fantastic. It was very well written, it was emotional, it was a great opening 30 minutes to the episode. But the major choice I just didn't care for. It's not even that it was bad, it wasn't, it was well written, it was emotional, it made me emotional, which was clearly the intention. It just felt a wee bit manipulative, beyond the obvious emotional manipulation that any story is going to have. It felt a bit unnecessary, or I guess a bit forced, I suppose. Maybe that's just me being whiny and not liking how sad it was, but from a personal perspective, that particular moment could have been removed without affecting anything. The rest of the episode was phenomenal, don't get me wrong, it was, a, it was great. It was just that one moment early on that I just didn't really care for. The only other issue with the game really is just the fact that the lip syncing can be kind of off. Characters' mouths don't always look right with what they're saying. But that's a pretty minor complaint overall. So, I realize that this has been a pretty short review, but honestly, it's kind of hard to go into much more detail about the game without spoiling a lot of the plot, and that would ruin the point of the game. So, I'm just going to go on ahead and wrap this up here and score the entire season as a whole. Season 1, if there is a season 2, but this is season 1 of Life is Strange, gets a score of a 9 out of 10. It is fantastic. If you have not played it already, go out and do so. It is a great game. It is well worth your time and money. You have got to play it.